Space is Sims, and we are back with more Steam Prison. And we're just continuing where we left off. We're now into the meat, I feel like, of... Well, not real. I mean, we're into more of the actual Finn route as opposed to... It's kind of like the prologue thing, and we've already read it. This is now different. We're into the different stuff. Although, I mean, we got into the different stuff in the last part. You know what I mean. You know what I meant. Anyway, um, we started off the last part kind of doing the same, like being in the same stuff that we'd already read and now we're definitely into it's all different so we just saw finn in prison i'm trying to like adjust my like freaking pillows behind me like my back hurts like a motherfucker but anyway um yeah so we just saw finn and he straight up admitted he loved us so yeah i'm still impressed by that uh i like that he just straight up comes out look again we knew the second he walked up and was like, hi, and you're like, this is my partner, Finn. He's in love with us. I already knew. But, and those characters like Finn are always like that. They're always blatantly in fucking love with you, and she's clueless, and you're like, okay, we're clueless about it. But they don't tell you to the end. And like, but this one, he's straight up, I'm in love with you. I'm so fucking in love with you. I would do anything for you. I love you. You said that like 30 times. Literally, he said it like 30 times. I think it was like six. <laughs> like, I mean, it was excessive. So I kind of appreciate that, that it's you know, like that. But anyway, so here we are. We don't know that we're going to end up in the depths too. We just think we're never going to see him again. I guess because neither one of us knew what was going to happen to me. He didn't know we're going to end up there either. Otherwise, he might not have said that he killed our parents. It's probably better that he did, though. I mean, for his sanity. And again, I don't, I don't hate Finn in his own route. All right. We'll see. We'll see how creepy, clingy, and weird you get. Because, I mean... I don't hate you like I did when you were stabbing Elk Creed. Just like shooting him. Whatever the fuck you did. Look, you killed Elk Creed. And I'm still not kind of over it. <laughs> I don't like that Finn, but this one's okay. Anyway. Nothing useful came of that, ultimately. Not that there'd have been anything I could have done if I'd known how he felt. Still, it hurt me that I hadn't noticed. He'd always been with me. I thought I'd known when he'd laugh, when he'd be in trouble, when he'd be happy. But in the end... I didn't understand him at all, did I? I returned to my family's home for the first time in days. My servant awaited me when I opened the door. I talked to her and requested solitude until I felt better. Then I sent her home. Before she left, she gave me a letter. It was addressed to me. Sender was... Finn? Finn, you- oh, Finnis Euclid. Finn's father. Finn's father's name is Finnis? <laughs> Interesting. I was like, was that Finn's full name? Like, no doubt he was writing to me about Finn's crimes. Maybe this sounds cold to you, but I've always been- oh, that's Finn saying that, never mind. Maybe this sounds cold to you, but I've always been baggage for my family. I won't miss them. It felt depressing to remember what he'd said to me in the detention cells. I'll read it later. I put the letter down on the table inside. When I held my breath, I couldn't hear anything in the house. No talking, no footsteps, nothing. It was all gone. I steeled myself and walked into the silence. My footsteps had never echoed in such a loud and obnoxious way before. The temple had been here. There was no trace of my parents where they had lain on the floor. All well, the blood was gone. Well, it's nice that they cleaned up for you instead of just leaving that for you. It looked as though nothing at all had happened. All the evidence was gone. There's still some blood here. They'd missed some of it. I could still find faint traces. I knelt to clean it up. No, I'll leave it here. Perhaps it was my father's. Perhaps my mother's. Either way, it was proof they had been here. I should have been a better daughter to them. I didn't think they would just disappear like this. I wasn't ready. You never are. <clears throat> water was dripping onto the blood. No, not water. I'm crying. I was sobbing, the tears rolling down my cheeks and falling onto the floor. My throat was burning with pain. I put my hands against my face, but the tears escaped anyway. Why... Well, why did this have to happen? Who had done this? Who had a grudge against the Testellas? I don't know. I 
don't know. Had I made a mistake somewhere? Had there been a point where I could have prevented their deaths? I learned how to fight so I could protect the weak and the people I love, and yet... Perhaps I had wasted my time if I couldn't put it to use. I'm sorry, Father. Mother. Finn. The end! I'm just kidding. The next day... I looked terrible. The face staring back at me from the mirror was swollen and red from crying. Still... I had to get dressed and go to work. Normally, I wouldn't have liked to go to work feeling so downcast. But if I remained at home, I knew I'd cry again. Having something to do was good. A tiny part of me still expected movement in the house, but there was nobody. Of course, I'd sent the servant home. My father would sit there, reading the newspaper. My mother would come up to me, smile, and try to brush my hair. The memories were so vivid, and yet I'd never see them again. And that's that moment where you're always like, My mother would try to brush- Stop, Mom! God, leave my hair alone, it's fine! And now you're like, I wish she'd try to brush my hair again! Yeah. Just saying. My mom's never tried to brush my hair. But like... But you know, I knew it couldn't last forever, but death can visit us like a sudden shower of rain. I'd realized that back when my grandfather died. I'm still a child, aren't I? I touched the chair where my father had used to sit. I wish I could have learned more from them. I wish we could have had more time. I sighed and looked at the clock on the wall. Finn won't come to pick me up. I'll have to go alone. I'd lost so much, but I was alive. Allowed to live, more like. And I had to move forward. Father. Mother. See you later. He <laughs> thank you, Mom. But not really. Because they're not there. On leave? Why, Sir Cordoa? It all must be hard on you. You should rest at home for two or three days. No, I don't need leave. I want to do something. Please, Sir Cordoa. He's like, go on leave, take a few days off. You're not going to tell me what's going to happen to me? Maybe you should fucking tell me before you stick me in the elevator and send me down there. Maybe you warn me now, because you know what's going to happen. There's no other option. This is not like, we're trying to decide your fate. Like, you know what's going to happen regardless. That's why Enos is down there. His partner committed suicide. Well, was murdered, but committed suicide. He got sent to the hounds. Our partner partner murdered our parents. We're going to get sent to the hounds. That's, that's how it goes. I can't, Estella. It's government policy. You're placed on leave. Policy? Sir Cardella nodded. You know that rank one officers work in groups of two. You don't have a partner anymore. Since you can't do your old job, I don't see what purpose your presence here serves. Just go home. I didn't want to give in, but I saw no way to convince Sir Cordoba to get go against the policy. Yes, but I'm a rank two officer now. I got a promotion. Very well. Goodbye. Good. And try not to get too depressed, Estella. I mean, you won't let me work and my parents are dead. The fuck, dude? <laughs> You'll see Finn again soon. What? Nothing. I shut myself at home. Morning, noon, evening. The colors of the sky slid by. Well, that's like the worst place to be, because then you're just surrounded by your empty house, knowing your parents should be there, but they're not. Unlike the sky, my mood didn't change. Generally, I moped and rolled around on my bed. Impassively, I waited for the time to pass. Nothing improved. I didn't begin to feel better, and I couldn't find peace either. Still, I was unable to do anything. I seemed to be imprisoned in my room, bound by invisible chains. On the third morning, my empty stomach woke me up. I hadn't eaten or even drunk any water. The day before, I'd hoped my mood would improve, but it hadn't. I have to eat something. 
I crawled out of bed hoping to find food somewhere. That's the one thing that like never changes. Like even if I'm like, I'm so sad or like I'm sick and you're like, I don't want to eat. Your stomach's like, eat. And you're like, I don't want to eat. I don't feel good. It's like, eat something. Like, shut up, stomach. I don't want to eat. Like when my allergies are kicking my ass, the last thing I want to do is literally move. I just want to curl up in a ball and cry. And like, then your stomach's like, hey, I'm hungry. And you're like, yeah, but I don't want to eat anything. I can't have any joy in like eating any food. And you're like, fuck you, stomach. <laughs> like, but I want you to fucking eat. You can't enjoy food. Like, like, I wish my stomach would just shut the fuck up. Some days you're like, oh, some days my stomach doesn't say shit. And all of a sudden my brain's like, we're going to die. <laughs> like, it's like the blood sugar, everything. You're like, oh, my body's shaking. I feel weird and I have a headache and nothing is right. And you're like, okay, well, no. <laughs> Yeah, but when you don't want to eat because you're like, no, nah, I don't want to eat. I don't feel good. Your stomach's like, hey, so we should eat. It's like the worst when your stomach's upset, like you actually have a stomach ache, like you ate something bad and you're like, oh, God, I think I'm going to die. And then your stomach's like, hey, we're hungry. And you're like, no, we're not. And it's like, yeah, we are. And you're like, no, it's not going to be good. Oh. <laughs> Also, I just always had the habit as a child, bored eating, depressed eating, so... Oh, I clicked my button by accident. I crawled out of bed, hoping to find food somewhere. When I left the room, I looked into the mirror. I looked terrible. My hair and my clothes were disheveled. I looked, if nothing else, very tired. What would my mother think, I thought. I had a feeling she'd have given me a long and exasperated lecture. We're not high nobility, but we are noble. You have to look the part. My father had said the same at some point. Let's stop this. I decided I wasn't going to shut myself in my room again. I decided I wasn't going to languish like that. Like the dawn, I had to change. Huh. I haven't eaten so much in a while. I hadn't been sure if I had food in the ha if I had food in the house. My servant had left me dried sausage and hard baked bread. I was able to eat heartily. I wonder what I have to do to make something so delicious. The kitchen was the servant's realm. I was taught that the masters flat out did not enter it. I'd seen others preparing food, but I had no idea how any of it was really done. I'd like to learn how to cook at least, sim at least simple food. I looked at the corner of the table. A letter from the Euclises. I'd completely ignored it so far. I can't keep doing that. I know, because I'm like, if you get sent to the depths and we don't read it, I'm going to be like, what the fuck was in the letter, though? What was the point of that if we can't read it? I had to move forward. I had to read it. I took it and broke the seal. And that's the worst, because now she's having this moment of, I have to move forward and I'm going to be positive. Oh. Because, like, that's natural, like, when you're in a state of depression and you're sad about something, like, my parents are dead and Finn's gone and everything... You have those moments of you're like, yes, I'm going to be motivated to feel good about it. And then you're like, but wait, why am I having it? And like, those are the worst. Because you need to have them. You need to have those good moments to kind of like help push you forward. But then you feel like worse. Then like when the bad stuff happens again, it feels worse. Because before you were like, I'm in just a constant state of sadness. So you're like, I'm just sad. I'm a little sadder than normal. And maybe I'm okay. But you're in this fluctuation of sad, right? And then you feel good for a minute. You're like, oh, I feel good for... Everyone is dead! And then it's like a plummet right back down. <laughs> it's terrible. No, oh, yeah. It was an apology for Finn's actions. I also wanted to apologize in person. It ended with a meek plea to contact them once I felt ready. It's not Finn's fault, and it isn't theirs either. Better late than never. I have to talk to them and tell them I don't hold a grudge. It was past noon when I went out. There's actually, like, background people. I don't remember that in the original game. Can you hear them? I don't know how loud it is for you, but... The town looked as lively as always. It felt insulting. Everything was the same it always had been. The people, the streets, everything. The Euclises run a store somewhere here. Hmm. What's that noise? I 
I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive us. Forgive us and our idiot son. We're so sorry for any inconvenience. We really are. Please forgive us. It's one of them. I don't know who it is. What? There was a sizable crowd in a street corner gathered around something. It was difficult to pass by or through. I tried to look to the center of the crowd and an old woman next to me sighed. Are they doing it again today? They don't learn, do they? Again today? Yes, this is the second... No, the third day. Now the boss of the Euclid's company keeps on apologizing together with his wife. It can't be easy having such a stupid son. The Euclid's company's boss. I realize what this meant. Like, they're, we're gonna buy something from someone who raised a murderer? I hope you go bankrupt! Oh my god, that's kind of harsh. It's not his fault. I became angry. What's wrong with him? Forced to act, I pushed my way through the crowd. Oh, yes. The crowd was surrounding a man and a woman. The man was Finn's father, Finnis. The woman was his mother, Elaine. Apologizing won't bring back the dead, you know that, right? We're so sorry. We'll do anything. Please forgive us. This is ridiculous. The two had been apologizing for a while, just as the old woman had said. Their crumpled posture and tired eyes spoke of how long they'd been doing it. As I stood there, they were prostrating themselves on the ground. I should have read the letter and come here sooner. It wasn't their fault. Finn hadn't even killed anyone. He was only lying for my sake. I shouldn't have shut myself in. I just assumed I was the only one suffering. That doesn't sound honest to me. I want your forehead on the pavement. An ill-mannered man was standing before them with his foot raised. Before he had a chance to kick them, I intervened. Stop it! Don't mistreat them! Huh, who the fuck are you? Get out! I won't. I'm Spacey Testella, a rank one police officer. Also, my parents were the ones that were murdered. Go fuck yourself, buddy. Lady Spacey, we're so sorry for what Finn has done. It's all right. Look up. You did nothing wrong. Everyone, please disperse and stop causing trouble. You have nothing to do with any of this. I glared back at the crowd. Roughly half of them left. The man and some curious onlookers remained. Nothing to do with it? I used to buy from these fuckers. They took my money and used it to raise a murderer. I hate them. I hope they fucking suffer. I like this man. He gets me. <laughs> he says all the things I like. These fucks. Fuck. Fuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mild swearing in this game, by the way. You insolent! I walked up to the man and with great effort kept myself from punching him. Instead, I glared. W what? You're gonna pay if you say any more. You have no right to torment them. Get lost! What's going on here? No fighting in the street. Oh. Oh, it's this guy. My colleague, Senkabolt Ark, and his partner appeared on the scene. Are you crazy? What were you doing to these civilians? I'm perfectly sane. This idiot was abusing these two. It's his fault. This idiot, huh? Look to me like you lost your cool. Oh no, I hadn't lost my cool yet. Not yet? Well, well, I see the owners of the Euclid's company over there. I'm sure this is all very emotionally charged. Step away from the man, all right? I took a few steps back. The man took this chance to hurry away. Ark sighed as he watched him leave. At least you weren't carrying a sword. I'd have to file a report if you hurt someone. I agree. I might have slain him if I'd been armed. Uh-huh. You're being dramatic. Go to the chapel and try to calm down. Good idea. He's like, you're being dramatic. God, woman. I'll kill you. You know what? If we're going to kill anyone and get sent to the depths, can we kill this bitch? Although when we came back at one point, he was like, oh, hey, hi, what's up? And you were like, why are you being nice to me? This is fucking weird. What is his deal? <laughs> why? Why does he exist? We know why Sir Cordell is around, but this guy has no purpose aside from to be like, you confused by you. Because one minute he's like, oh, God, you're just a dumb woman, huh? And now he's just being like, ugh. Look, God, I understand. Like, he's he's being a little bit of a dick, but, like, not really. 
Because you know he kind of understands that he's like, look, I'd have to charge you if you were carrying a sword. Like, he's just like, uh, I had to deal with shit. And then the time we come back, he's like, oh, hey, hi, what's up? How are things? And you're like, what? <laughs> like, they, could, they didn't get his personality really straight. I don't know. I was surprised to find myself treated so well by Ark. Again, maybe it's really just because your parents are dead. And he's like, ah, I gotta be nice to you now. Maybe I actually look crazy to him right now. Or that too. I turned around to Finn's parents and knelt before them. You don't have to do that. Please stand up. No, we couldn't do that. We're the reason your family is dead. The reason your life was destroyed. No. Oh, there has to be some way to make amends. But if we can only apologize. Finn didn't do it. You have nothing to apologize for. Finn had taken the blame for me. These two hadn't raised a murderer. They'd raised my protector. I wish I could tell them the truth. I would just say, like, I don't believe Finn did it. I don't know why he claimed he did. I took the hands of Finn I took the hand of Finn's mother and thought about the best way to proceed. I forgive you. I forgive both of you. Others will blame you for raising a criminal, but I want you to live a good life. My parents would have wanted that too. Whatever he did later, Finn was good to me for a long time. I still feel grateful to him. Please, don't abandon him. Include him in your prayers. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Her voice was faltering. I embraced her and patted her on the back. His love for me is a crime, but... I don't want to see them suffer for a murder which Finn didn't commit. And that's the worst thing. Like, they're getting blamed. Like, I mean, it is gonna happen. Like, but... Now what? Mark was right. Oh, coming here was a good idea. It was so quiet. The right kind of environment to calm down in. Uh. Oh, it's you. No, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were here. I bowed hurriedly. Excuse me. No, no, it don't leave. The chapel is open to everyone. I stay here, Spacey to Stella. You know my name? I do. Well, I learned it the other day. You are the daughter of Keith Testella. He was killed a few days ago. Keith Testella always had the people on his mind in the assembly. We've lost a good man. St. Yune. St. Yune knew my father. Simply hearing my father's name from him already made me happy. He even praised his work. My father would be overjoyed to hear that, St. Yune. I wish I had told him when he was still alive. And the lives of human beings are so disastrously short. Tell me if there's anything I can do. I'd like to help. St. Yune. The assembly hadn't ended well, but perhaps St. Yune could. But I don't have the right to ask for anything. I can see you want to tell me something, but you're reluctant. I don't know whether I can help, but we can only find out if you talk to me about it. He is a good boy, though. Like, I mean, in his route, it was a little weird. Like, I want you to kill me. What? But again, I appreciate the oddness because it fit his character. Like, I just want to die. I've been alive for like thousands of fucking, I've been alive for fucking forever. Please fucking kill me. Jesus. Like, you know. And he was a little crazy. <laughs> but like, but he is a good character. I just, I don't want to date him, you know. But... Okay? As you know, someone killed my parents. What are you doing? You're acting weird. You just like all standing tall with your wings puffed out, like you're trying to like fight someone off, but other birds over there and I'm over here. Nobody's nobody's getting all up in your space. You scared? Are you angry? What's your problem? Such a weird little bird. However, the one sentence for it, it's not the criminal. He's not? Yes. The one sentence for it is called Finn Euclid. He was my partner in the police. He wanted to prevent me from being accused of the crime, so he confessed to something he hadn't done. Why would he do that? Well, because he said he loves me. I don't know. But he's a good man. I suppose he must have tried to sacrifice himself for me. 
Would someone accept this punishment simply out of kindness? He must be a wonderful person. Well, anyway, I want to save him. Finn is innocent. I see. If he didn't do it, who do you think did? I don't know. And that makes it difficult. But once he's sent into the depths, even for a crime he didn't commit, it'd be hard for me to save him. But we don't know where the criminals are or what they do down there. I see. If St. Yune couldn't help Finn, could you at least help the Euclid's family then? Euclid's? Yes, his family operates a chain of shops. The people are blaming them for what Finn was sentenced for. Many people are working at their shops. They'll lose their jobs if the company goes bankrupt due to the actions of a heartless minority. I'm sure the government would like to maintain stability as well. Please help them before it's too late. I see. Yes, an increase in the unemployed population is not desirable. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Anything else? Is there nothing you want for yourself? I mean, I don't want Finn to be sentenced and my parents are dead, so like, what could I possibly fucking want for myself? Can you bring my parents back? No? Then what the fuck did you ask for? God. <laughs> for myself. Of course I did, but I couldn't impose on him any further. He's going to help the Euclises. I'll help myself. I'm alright. Thank you for your concern. Well then, goodbye. It was an honor to speak with you, Saint Yune. Yes, goodbye. The blessings of heaven are eternal. And may you find peace, Spacey Testella. Wow. I can't believe I actually talked to St. Yune. At least this should make it easier for the Euclid's company. Now I can worry about myself. I was alive. I could take care of myself. I like how they wrap that up, because then you're not, like, going down into the depths. Well, I mean, they didn't have to put that in there at all. You know what I mean? They didn't have to give you the letter. You didn't have to talk to them. You didn't have to ask. You, you didn't need any of that. But I like that they kind of put it in there so it wasn't just like... What about your family? And he's like, I don't care. And then you're like, sweet, I don't care either. Like, they put it in, you saw them, and then you asked, and they kind of just put it in a nice little bow instead of you going down to the depths and worrying, like, well, what about, like, Finn's family? Like, what about those poor people? And you're just, like, wondering in the back of your mind what happens to them? You know, like, oh, Yune took care of them. It's cool. Yune did something, and now the people, and it's fine. You know, you can at least rest assured that, you know, assuming some Yune does something right. That makes it sound like Yuna does stuff wrong all the time. But you know what I meant. Like, anyway. Oh, I was alive. I could take care of myself. Anyway, and that's what I wanted. I want to do what I can alone. I'd never be able to live like nothing happened. I had to find out who killed my parents. I had to lay bare the truth. And if possible, save Finn. I can't love him back. But at the very least, I could free him of the punishment he didn't deserve. And yet, you're going to go into the depths and fall in love with him. Hmm? He's still my partner, even if we're far away from each other. I won't abandon him. I will save you, Finn. Mm -hmm. The man I was seeing was... Sir Cordoa? Oh, Tistella. Good thing I ran into you. It is? Yes, I have something to give you. Sir Cordoba led me into one of the visitor's rooms. He closed the door and handed me a sealed letter. What is it? A notification for you from the temple. Oh, he looks angry. A notification? May I open it? Please? Now he looks angry. I was unsettled by his grave demeanor. What could this be? There was a single folded letter within. I glanced at Sir Cordoba again and opened it. Rank 1 Officer Employment Termination Notice. What is this, Sir Cordoa? You've been fired. That's what it looks like. Very sad, Testella. But I can't accept this. I demand an explanation. Sir Cordoa sighed and nodded. As you know, police officers always work in pairs unless they work in the administration. If one of them is dismissed for any reason, the other is judged partly to blame and is also dismissed. But... What? You can't just fire me. What am I supposed to do? Don't worry. Well, maybe worry a little. The temple treats you as being dismissed, but you will be reassigned. Reassigned? 
Yes. To the hounds. We're like, fuck. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten a fight. You're like, can I ask you something, Sir Cordella? Sure, what is it? Uh, is Sir Sashin still in charge of that? Yep. Oh, fuck. Uh, so the fact that I tried to kill him in a sword fight, is like, <laughs> it's nice knowing you, Tistella. You're not going to last a day in the creek. Ahem, you're not going to last a day in the depths. To the hounds? They're sending me to the depths? Yes. The hounds have broader duties than just policing the people there. Some retraining will be required. Some retraining. I feel like there should be air quotes around that. Will be required. If you serve well, you should be able to return. Don't think about mounting an escape. This is not like the mission you went on for the rank two exam. You can't refuse. Refusing a reassignment is a crime that will see you exiled for good. So I'm going to the Sanctuary District either way. Yes? Wouldn't you rather serve with the hounds, then? Yes. I leave tomorrow, according to the notice. I had no chance to find the real criminal in half a day. Neither could I delay my reassignment to the depths. I'll have to put off finding the criminal until I return. The more time passed, the more evidence would disappear. And yet... How many months does it normally take to return? Oh, I honestly don't know. Hardly anyone comes back in the first place. I... See. It's like, how many months? Is... <laughs> <laughs> months. You're cute, Tistella. Try yours. Don't be dejected. It's absolutely possible. You're excellent. If you work hard, you will come back. No, I won't. I'm going to end up dead. But, you know, good for you for putting on a brave front and pretending to be the nice, jovial, jolly guy we, th we thought you were. All right. I hope so. Thank you for everything you did until now. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Yes. Godspeed to Stella. He's like, well, I did my job. Got rid of her. Well, you you drop a peanut. And you make a lot of thumbs. Yeah, your foot's holding like you're holding a peanut, but it's gone. You gotta learn to grip harder. I won't be seeing this for a while. The city I had grown up seeing looked special to me. <laughs> to the hounds, huh? I'd have to serve under Sir Sashin, I knew. <laughs> I don't like it, but Sir Cordell is right. I can't refuse. I'll have to serve faithfully. And one day, I'll be back here. I walked through the gate to my home, knowing the future would require determination, and this is where we see how much torture Sashin's gonna put us through. And how much torture... See, this is where it'd be fun to have a Sashin route, because Finn gets blamed, you go down, and then you end up falling in love with Sashin while he's torturing you and trying to, like, reprogram you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We all know we want it. <laughs> he should be the character I hate the most. But yet, Finn was the one I hated the most. Odd. Look, I knew what I was getting with Sir Sasha, and Finn fooled me with this whole, like, nice boy fucking in love with you persona, and then stabbed fucking Elkreed, okay? Look, never gonna let it go. But Sasha was always a fucking douche canoe. You're like, he's an asshole. He'd put us in a cage and fucking beat us. You knew. You knew. You knew what would be coming. Then you didn't see it coming, and I have trust issues now. But Finn in this route is fine. He's the lovey doormat, so it's fine. He's probably going to be very, very, like, pushy. I, and I'm probably going to be like, I'm going to need you to back off. I know you're in love with me, but, like, simmer down and let me slowly fall in love with you. Don't get handsy and weird with me. You know. We'll see. I walked through the gates to my home, knowing the future would require determination. Hmm. There was a small basket in front of the main door. It was covered by cloth. I couldn't see the contents. What's inside? I carefully reached for the cloth. Flowers? Inside the basket was a collection of colorful flowers. I spotted a small card laying beside them and picked it up. Please take them, Euclid. Finn's parents must have sent them. How nice. I remember getting one before. It had been about a year before, during winter. 
I've been down with a cold. Finn had brought me a basket. That basket had apples, not flowers. They were good. He'd been so worried. He brought you a bouquet of apples. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's actually kind of adorable. Like, I thought she's like, oh, he brought you flowers because you were sick. Okay, he brought you apples. What? That's a- Okay. That's actually really fucking cute. And it little tugs at my heartstring. Ding, ding. Aw. That's actually cuter than flowers. I brought you apples. It's slightly odd. <laughs> like, okay. Oh. Finn must have already... I remembered what he had said. Love, huh? Perhaps he'd only said that to ensure a conviction. It was hard to say. Either way, it confused me. I should think about it. Finn was somewhere else. No amount of worrying could give me answers. I shouldn't think about it. Okay. I shouldn't think about it. Finn was somewhere else. No amount of worrying could give me That makes more sense. I have to focus on the things I can actually do. I ate dinner and went back to my room to prepare for my assignment to the depths. I'm only allowed limited baggage, I think. I pulled out the notice I'd gotten to check. Allowed possessions. Sword. And small, one-handed bag with possessions. Thankfully, they're letting me bring my sword. Every sword was completely different. I'd grown accustomed to mine and could use it like an extension of my arm. Of course, I could also fight with a sword I'd never used before. One-handed bag. I can carry this bag with one hand. Ma'am. That thing's sort of... It's got wheels! It's one-handed! <laughs> I could also fight with a sword I'd never used before, but I preferred the one I had practiced with. The sword aside, what should I bring? She walks in wearing all of her clothes, dragging it with a tiny bag. I looked around the room, unsure of what I needed. That would suck. I can only bring one bag. All my stuff. I'd be sad without my stuff. What's gonna happen to my stuff? Hmm... I need my things. They give me comfort, okay? I'm a weird individual. I looked around the room, unsure of what I needed. A pillow won't fit into a small bag. I don't want a picture of my parents to become dirty. I don't need anything, I guess. I'm not there to have fun. I need my sword, but that's all. I touched the pendant under my clothes and nodded. You still should take a picture of your parents. Like, you know. Carrying it will just make it harder. I decided to leave it in my room, together with all the memories. Wow, she's really determined that she's going to come back, huh? That's so weird. I'm a little early. There was still time before I had to enter the elevator. I wondered how I was going to pass the time. Well, I mean, I wonder, because I don't know how this ends. Maybe we end up coming back, or maybe we stay down there. But if we stay down there, we don't... Like, she's like, I don't need to take anything. I'll come back. You're really convinced, huh? Like, I... I don't know. Hmm. Oh, there you are. Lord Fitzgerald. Thank goodness I made it in time. I needed to see you. Me? Lord Fitzgerald smiled softly. I heard you were going to the depths, and I wanted to say goodbye. I know it's part of your job, but... Yes... Um, but there are others who suffer more than I do. Who told him I'm going to the depths? Even I hadn't found out I would be reassigned to the hounds until I had to know. And yet he... Oh, I guess Lord Warner told him. I accepted this explanation and looked at him directly. At least I'm not going as a criminal. I see. I've never been to the depths. I heard it's a savage, uncivilized land. Be safe, Lady Spacey. Thank you, Lord Fitzgerald. You too. Before leaving, I remembered that our engagement had been called off. I'd have normally asked him for the reason, but I guess it doesn't matter now. I was going to the depths, and like, she's like, oh, wait a minute. Pieces will fall into place later. Asking Lord Fitzgerald about it now would just put him in an awkward position. Thank you for seeing me off so early in the morning. You're a good man. He's the shadiest of the shade. Goodbye, Lord Fitzgerald. I know, I like how, like, even in this, they're like, oh, like, he's so nice, and he's not. Again, this would have been so much better to do first. I waited a little at the station. 
At the designated time, the elevator arrived and I went in. The announcement I already knew finished. I sighed and reclined into the seat. I closed my eyes and listened to the rumbling of the machinery. I didn't think I'd be in here again. The last time I'd been in the elevator had been during the Rank 2 qualifications on my way to the depths. Finn had been with me. Well, Finn's going to have a whole new outfit. Ooh, fancy. You know, because he can't wear that. And not just then. He'd always been with me. I opened my eyes and looked around. Finn was gone. There was nobody else. It feels so large with you not in here, Finn. I was descending to serve with the hounds. He had not. He'd been sent down as a criminal. I wonder how he felt when he was in here. What was he thinking about on the way? Finn, I hope you're doing all right. To be honest, it does seem very easily plausible for her to fall in love with him, even though, like, love is unsanctioned, blah, 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 because he's in love with her, and she's so very concerned about him, and not just, and, like, yes, it's like, oh, he's just my friend, he's just my, he's my friend and my partner and whatever, but that's kind of how, like, relationships start, though, like, the good one, like, your friends, you care about them, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, no, I need you in my life, and it's like, that bond, you know what I mean? Like, so it's a believable way for her to fall in love with him. Instead of being like, what? No, I have no feelings, no emotions whatsoever. But what are you shrieking at? Don't shriek at your food, weirdo. But like, again, it should have been, it should have been the first one. <laughs> I keep saying that forever, but yeah. So, I mean, I can find a believable that she'd like fall for him as long as he doesn't get too super pushy about it. Like if he's like, no, like it's cool. I know I told you that, but let's just be pals type of a thing. And he kind of holds back. Till we fall in love with him. Yeah, sure, he's always going to do little things, I'm sure. To be like, that are just a little flirty and nice and touchy. Where most, your friends wouldn't be like, oh, let me just grab your hand for some, oh, come over here. You know, or like little things where like, the person likes you and it's like, it's a little obvious. But it's not like, I'm going to push you up against a wall and shove my tongue down your throat. Or I'm going to be handsy with you or get like, fucking molesty. Like, okay, Finn, let's not go there. Don't get that far. But like. Be the nice guy who's like, no, I, I respect that you're not in love with me. That's cool. Where, no, oh, hey, we actually realized that, you know, maybe we kind of were all along a little bit. And, you know, that friendship and that bond of partnership turns into love. And it'd be cool. That'd be, I'd be okay. I could probably handle that. But he's really, like, pushy and creepy and like, oh, no, I couldn't help myself. I just need you. And you're practically dry humping my leg. I'm just not going to gonna be like, no, mm -mm. you're going back in the fuck fin pile, okay? I'm just saying. I'm wary. But so far, I'm okay with you. I'm just I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know how it's gonna go. <laughs> I'm not gonna trust you and then have you get all molesty on me, okay? Is all I'm just I arrived in the depths at around noon. Stop! The cage door is not closed. Do not yell at me. I exited the elevator and looked around. The wind caressing my skin was humid. I have to get used to the humidity. I began to walk away from the station. I don't know if it's Inez or Sasha saying, There you are. That was Inez. There you are. If I remember correctly, I'm Inez Heinrich Hein, the Hound's second in command. I'll be your superior. I look forward to working with you, Spacey. I see. I look forward to working with you, Sir Inez. Is Sashin dead? He's like, no, damn it. At least Sir Sashin didn't come here to meet me. Yeah, because we'd ended up dead. Hey, what is your problem? Do not make that noise. You're making that noise like you're mad for some reason, but the door is open. You can come out. Don't just shriek at me. Stop. I'm busy. If you want attention, you come over here. Jerk. I'd have to meet the commander, Sir Sashin, eventually. I'd fought him before, so I wanted to avoid him as much as possible. Seeing each other is going to remind us of that. I had to serve well if I wanted to return to the heights. Stirring up trouble wasn't going to bring me any closer to that goal. I have to get my act together. I told myself and looked directly at Sir Inez. Thank you for your guidance and wisdom. 
Serena seemed surprised by the formality and merely groaned in acknowledgement. Ordinarily, you'd be shown the barracks where you can deposit your belongings, but you don't seem to carry any. No, I only need my sword. I'm given to understand that all my requirements will be taken care of, so I've brought nothing else. I see. And then we'll omit the barracks and I'll show you around the Sanctuary District. Show me around? That won't be necessary. I went here on an observation mission before. It hasn't been that long and I remember it well. Don't talk back at me, Greenhorn. I'm giving you an order. And that's what Sash would say, I'd wager. And you're part of the Hounds now. I advise against saying the first thing that pops into your head. Or restrain your rebellious urges or you'll get yourself into trouble. I understand. I'll keep that in mind. What did I just fucking say? I'm just kidding. Obviously, the depths are less sophisticated than the heights. However, the part of the sanctuary district you were shown was comparatively orderly. You're the district's hound now. You'll see the darker, dirtier areas as well. Prepare yourself. All right. I can't wait to see our outfit. I want to see us in the hound suit. It's going to be fun. Well, let's go then. Sir Ina's led me around the Sanctuary District again. We turned off from the main road and into the side and back streets. The stench was a mixture of blood, grime, and ash. We were merely steps away from the main road, and yet it was already a completely different environment. According to Sir Ina's, the area was infamous for its frequent homicides. We had homicides in the Heights as well. I mean, duh, your parents. <laughs> like, if they were infamous for their frequency here, then... Every step I took uh, seemed to take me deeper into a different world. We went into the headquarters of the Hounds when we were done. Finn's living with uh, Ryleth and Merlot, and he's Merlot's new dad. He's like, oh, I, I'm married to Ryleth now. You've been here four days, Finn. <laughs> and then we get angry and jealous, and we kill Ryleth, and oh my god. <laughs> You belong to me, Finn! I think we could handle Sashin's abuse, but I'm just saying it'd be kind of fucked up. We don't really ever get the uh, Tomei heroines where we're like the complete and utter psychopath. We get a little bit where we do, but not completely like as far in the realm of like our love interests, like their tropes and stuff. I want to be the tropey one. I want us, I want to be a. A Tomei heroine who, in this route, we're the Yandere, in this route, we're the... Like, you know what I mean? I want to go and I want to be that way. I want to be that way, not... This is the boyfriend we're dating. No, I want 100% us to be... You get that a little bit in Taisho Alice, I guess, but... She's still a little, like, cutesy and happy still in all the routes, but I, I really want us to be, like... Just... Like an... Like the asshole that we usually date. Oh, I'm gonna lock you up and torture you and put you in a... Like... Not like, oh, we're, we're still, like, nice and sweet and maybe we're a little crazy. No, we're just straight up fucking a psychopath. Be kind of fucked up, but it'd be kind of fun. We are always the one thrown in a cage. I'm gonna start throwing them in a cage and abusing them. I'm just saying. Like, turnabout! Oh, the turntables. We went to the headquarters of the Hounds when we were done. At long last. Inside, I knew they would give me my Hounds uniform. I'd no longer be the police officer I was when I changed into it. I had to accept it. It- Oh, I wasn't at my final destination. That had to lie somewhere else. I have to go back to the heights. Finally, you're here. Took you long enough, rank one officer. <laughs> I fucking love him so much. He's such a douchebag, but he's just got such a presence. He shows up and he's like, angry bitch eyes. And you're like, I just... <laughs> he's... Anyway... He's not as great as fucking Elkreed, but, like, he's a great antagonist. Sir Sashin? Oh, sorry. You lost that job, I think. No doubt you went back to your fancy life while we, while we were struggling down here. It is him. Sashin Brandenburg. I really did not like that man. I just, like, she's like, I did not like him. Nice. So, I'm like, I hate him. Now that you're here, know that my orders are absolute. 
I won't tolerate dissent. You're gonna move across the game board and die in the gutters when I tell you to. I've been assigned to the Hounds. Our job is protecting the livelihood of the people in the Sanctuary District and defending it from outside threats. Sir Sashin, I'll follow you as commander as much as possible. However, if your commands violate the basic function of the Hounds, I will refuse. Girl! That's the first thing Finn said, and he got backslapped, and then he became a murderer. Nah, he just didn't have the conviction we did, but... What did you just... If you want me to move, give the right commands, Commander. Damn! This is why a path with him would be hot. It would just be that you'd be like, oh my god, we're having, like, the hardest, dirtiest sex right now. Like, you just... It would just be, like, all sorts of raw... Oh god, no, like... It would be a lot of wrong. There'd be a lot of abuse and shit, but she would just give it right back and she'd hit... Oh. We'd both probably actually abuse each other and it would be just like a fucking train wreck, but I want it. You insolent... <laughs> you know, this is like... Shit. Stop it, Sash. What do you get from killing her? We lost another man last week. You're the first one in trouble if we won run low on strength. Get that bitch out of my sight, Inez. Roger. Come on, let's go. Sashin can't handle women because the woman who was in charge, I think he actually liked her and respected her and then she died and he blames himself, right? Isn't that kind of what happened? Like, she died and he's like, I took over. But I think he actually respected her. You know what I mean? Except for the fact he's like, you're too fucking soft and too nice. And then he just went, <laughs> but I think it kind of was his fault she died, so. That's why he hates women. He just feels like it's his fault. You can't face any other woman because of <laughs> He's like broken. We could fix him by like beating him into submission, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just want the goddamn route, man. What are you doing? told you not to refuse his orders. I'm sorry, Sir Inez. It was the truth. I felt I had to mention it as early as possible. Whether I serve with the hounds or not, I serve the people. Even if they're criminals, I want to treat them fairly. You didn't want to provoke Sash, then? No, but I was irritated by what he told me. I made him angry as well. I'll try to refrain from doing it again in the future. Good. Try not to rile him up. Pretty sure if I blink it riles him up, but... I will. Sir Inez, I do have one question. You said you lost a man. Is there strife within the hounds? No. He was killed by the convicts. And not everyone they send down to us has a peaceful disposition. And they'll target you even more since you're a woman. Always be on your guard. I will. Why would they want to kill us? In the heights, my sword had served the people. I'd never used it in self-defense, only in training. Now I might have to. Everything is different here. Yeah, you're gonna have to be a little hardcore. I felt, more than ever, that I had to return alive. Not if the bad endings have anything to say about it. I think he might only have one or two, but he doesn't have a lot because we got all of his other bad endings technically on the original. And this is your room. Hmm. My room was surprisingly clean. It was austere, yes, but far cleaner than the appearance of the Sanctuary District would, get ho would give hope for. I know you were aristocracy and this change of lifestyle must come as a shock to you, but you'll have to manage. And thank you for your concern, Sir Inez. And don't worry, though. I wouldn't have become a police officer if I could only live in a world of plenty. This room's better than the temple restrooms. At least I have my own room here. I like temple restrooms. It sounds like you're talking about a bathroom, but it's the room for resting. Like an actual, like, nap room, you know? Yes. And we used to all sleep in the same room there. When Serena said this, I remembered what Sir, Cord Sir Cordella had told me. Police officers who lose their jobs are assigned to the hounds. Clearly, Serena had been a police officer as well in the past. And like Sasha, but why did he end up here? He was doing administrative shit, but like, you know what I mean? I'm not surprised. I think he makes for a good servant of justice. I can't imagine what kind of police officer Sir Sashin was, though. That's what I want to know! That's why we need his route. I don't think it ever existed, but I'm just saying fan disc route, please. 
I know it's sudden, but your work will start tomorrow. I want you to go on patrol for a while. All right. Who's going to be my partner? Serena shook his head. When we normally patrol alone, we don't have the numbers to go out in pairs like we did in the Heights. And take the whistle in the drawer there and use it when there's trouble. We will come to you. Very well. Thank you for your kindness. I'm not being kind. I do this for every new colleague. Good luck. You do this for every new colleague, but it's because you're nice. It's your job, but you're also nice. Serena's is a good man. I like him. It only made Sir Sashin's ill disposition more apparent. He's my superior, but still. I can't, I can't tolerate abuse of the citizens. I won't bow to Sir Sashin. I will live my life my own way. Yeah, there we are! Oh my god, her cloak is amazing! It's like, fucking long. Warder route. That's like, long as fuck. I mean, I, guess, I don't know why, like, I guess... Because you never see their full body, you never see how long the cloak is. Like, our cloak is, like, billowing. It's fucking amazing. It feels so... I turned around and looked at myself in a hand mirror. Weird. I was wearing a hound's uniform for the first time. It was a well-made uniform, but I couldn't get used to it. it. Oh, I felt like I had no choice in the wearing of it. When I looked at myself in the mirror, I seemed to see a different person. I should have brought a brush, at least. I used my fingers to comb my hair and put the hand mirror down on the bed. Yeah, that's what you didn't think about, did you? Do you have brushes? No. Contact stuff? Like, <laughs> glasses? Like, that looks passable. I'll have to do my best for the hounds. Chop your hair off. You're in the warder route now. Buzz cut. Faux hawk. I don't know. It'd be amazing. We have, like, we cut our hair really short. We have, like, a little faux hawk. And Finn's like, my hair's longer than yours. Get used to it, bitch. I'm the, I wear the pants in this relationship. <laughs> I'm the warden and you're the inmate. I mean, quite literally. <laughs> that's, that's a weird role-playing kink, but... I went to the ready room shared by all the Hounds members. It doubled as a mess hall, and I wanted to eat breakfast. You see, there is a fixed menu. Food that was being handed out at a counter, it seemed. Very efficient, I thought, and lined up behind some of the men. Their eyes. I could feel them looking at me. Many of them. Perhaps they were looking at me because I was new. Or maybe they're looking at me because I'm a woman. I looked around the room. The others were all men. And this makes it... She's like, uh-oh. Everyone I had seen the day before had been men as well. It's always been like this for me and the police. The temple preached the equality of the sexes, but in practice, almost all the physically demanding jobs were occupied by men. Right. It's not against the rules to join, though. Like I was gonna duck just because I was a woman. <laughs> I actually like that. She's like, I'm the only bitch here! I'll kick your asses! And she probably would. After I got my food, I looked for a table to sit at. Most of the seats were occupied. There was only a lone, empty chair near the corner. I walked over. New one, what are you doing? That voice. Oh. I turned around and saw Sir Sashin. Apparently, not only the people in the district were afraid of him, the entire room was quiet. I didn't know who was talking. I figured it was some dude. I was going to eat breakfast. And we have limited seats. There are no seats for the new ones. Know your place. What a ridiculous... Apologies, but I don't believe there is a place to eat it standing. I know that you don't like me, but harassing me about all these little things is injurious to your own dignity. If you want to lead people, you should do so by example. What did we say to Inez? She's like, I know I promised Inez. I tried. For like four seconds, I tried. You stupid. Sir Sasha glared at me and his right hand moved at astonishing speed. It hit the plate of food I was carrying and sent it flying through the air. What? Hmm. You're clumsy, new one. We have such limited food and you're wasting it. Be calm. Don't be angry. I gained nothing from arguing with him even more. Well, I mean, if you got angry enough, you could probably stab him. I'll be more careful in the future. Good. You must be hungry. I hope you like the bread here. Sir Sashi grinned and poked the bread lying on the floor with his boot. I was hungry. However, I can't eat off the floor. 
I clenched my fist and looked back at him. I'm fine. I'll be going on patrol now. Huh. <laughs> I don't like her. Of course you don't, because I'm a woman who's standing up to you. The hell are you looking at? Eat and get back to work. Perfect place to end it. <laughs> oh my god. So anyway, we will continue next week. Um, and probably run into Finn now that we're down here, so... There you go. This is probably the point, I bet, where we're wandering out. I hope we meet Ryleth and Merlot again. I mean, we kind of already met Merlot, but, you know, but I hope we just see them now that we're down here again, but... Anyway, and they're alive! And they're happy! Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up, and subscribe to see more! Oh, <laughs>